Uh, I'm hoping we are. It says everyone is on. Oh, I think now we're live for the second time. Uh, if you can hear me, just drop me a quick message just to make sure I'm not starting too early. Um, and then we'll crack on. Uh, so, got a chat page there. Cool. Uh, I will assume that you can all hear me. Be bad if you don't. Um, okay, so first of all, welcome. Thank you for, for watching. Um, the, the software, for some reason, messed up the... Um, a little bit of the, the wording on the presentation so for example we've got welcome with an e missing uh, so if you bear with that and there's a bit of a aha okay thank you i can see you in here excellent right excellent let's pass through cool um so what have we got in the presentation so talking about ridge runs um we've got a few to talk about We've got how the wave sets up locally, uh, wave cross country, thermal cross country, convergences, potential, or some, some flights that I've got in my head that I want to do. Um, whether that will happen or not, I don't know, but I'm certainly going to give it a good go. Um, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, about me, so I moved to North Wales about three years ago um, to run Lewinney Park, Denby Gliding Club. Um, and yeah, uh, so since then, did all the diamonds, did the 750, all in the DG1000 there, um, and really just exploring and having a really good time. And you can see from all the videos and pictures and stuff I put up um, that we're having a good time, and there's lots of fun to be had where we are. Um, okay, so again, it's messed up the wording a bit, the where knee park, but uh, that's our airfield, and that's what it looks like from above. Um, what toys we've got to play with, so we've got the Eurofox Tug, um, it's the turbo one, so it's, uh, it handles all the heavy stuff. Um, so I operate a DG1000 self-launcher, we've got an LS4 that is available, and a Sky Launch winch. Um, that's where we are in the world, uh, we've got, uh, in the north, north Wales basically, and having a bit of a zoom in there. Um, Oh, you can't see my mouse on here. But basically, out to the west and out to the south, we're completely clear of airspace, which is really good. We're clear up to flight level 195. Um, and, you know, we don't have to worry about ATZs and stuff, particularly locally. All that's a bit further into England Shire. Um, ridge runs. So what we talk about first. So this is the local ridge run. Um, we've got two turning points at either end of the ridge. We've got Denby Ridge South and Prostatin South. Doing that five times is 153k, so we've got a little bit of a, um, a competition going on who can do it the fastest every year. Um, and let's see a video. Right, here we go. So this is the first bodge. So if I click on that, local ridge run. Oh, before I play the video, um, if you turn down your volume a bit, that's if you want to hear me talk over the top of it. If you leave the, your volume on loud, uh, then you won't be able to hear me in the background. There is some cheesy music, I warn you right now. Right, so if I hit play. Uh, I'm wondering if you can hear me right now. Um, if you can't hear me, you've got your volume on too loud. Um, so we're going down our ridge. And so jumping across from Morvan I always Denver itself is Turn the volume down on mine, but you've got to turn it down with yours and it's a bit of it, okay? Yes, but now... Make him away downtown, walking 
You can, you've got to turn down the volume on your computers individually, otherwise uh, you're just going to hear cheesy music, I'm afraid, and not very much of me, which might be a great thing. Um, oh, yes, so the Snowdonia Ridge Run. Um, brief bit of history. So in 1958, uh, a chap called Bill Crease did a, he, he, I think they did auto tow off one of the ridges in, um, in a northwestly near Bangor, um, and then he ran kind of between Penn, Myanmar, and I don't think he, possibly down to Nevin. Um, and no one had done it fully since, or not that I'm aware of. Uh, so I read this article, which was in the clubhouse, and thought, oh, I must give it a go someday, and kind of worked it all out, and, uh, and here we are. Um, so I think I've got a video somewhere. If I click on this... Okay, so this is what the ridge looks like. Sorry, what the task looked like. So starting at the when he, the the red line is uh, with the engine running, um, and usually we shut down somewhere near Abergelly South. We glide out to the northern turn point, Conway West, and then we use the ridges, and um, going down all the way down to Nevin, which is 60 kilometres. So down to Nevin, back up to Conway West, and if you want to do it again, you do it again. Um, but you've also got the opportunity then to go home. It's a little bit of a marginal glide, depending on the day, um, to get back home. So if it's, but but you've got a tailwind, and if you can pick up some lift on the way home, then it's great. If not, then it can be a really nerve-wracking glide. But uh, if you do it in the middle of summer, it's dead easy. Um, I think I've got a video now. Do I need to right? Okay. So let me change now. Oh, which one is it? It's this one. Yes, it's this one. Right. Um, before I play this, remember the volume is in the bottom left of your laptop. Otherwise, you're going to be hearing some Oasis quite loud. Um, so this one is just over seven minutes long, um, but it's a great video. Here we go. <laughs> Um, so with flying um, Booker Gliding Club's Geodiscus, um, this was filmed a couple of months ago, I think, February-ish. <coughs> um, it's a very long tail, um, we towed 6,000 feet. Um, I was a bit worried about the first couple of ridges not working properly, which is why we towed a bit higher, um, so we could effectively just skip over the top of them. <coughs> So we're about to release, and you can see a bit of a, a wall of cloud up ahead of us. Um, so we end up going under it. I made a mistake before going through it, and ended up with ice on the wings, and the hole was just a bit of a nightmare. Um, so we come under it, and um, lost that extra height that I wanted, but whatever. Uh, all looking great, and then we fly through a shower straight away, which is a bit annoying. So this kind of ridge didn't really work. We have such wet wings, it was, working, it was quite weak of uh, lift. So eventually after a couple of turns of not climbing, uh, which is what we usually do there, um, we were above my minimum height so we went and carried on. 
So this first kind of bit is the trickiest bit, just, you just got to make sure you've got enough height really to make it across here. Um, feels down on the right there. So it's usually fairly safe, um, it depends on the sheet to be honest, but it's the ground, the soil, and the field that you want it to land in. So having that extra height to begin with just really gives you that extra height. It's too marginal, you might not have anywhere to land. Um, this is, I think this is the electric mountain where they store uh, water in the reservoir, and it's really cool to just store and bowl. There's a few jumps to make, and it's, uh, yeah, it's all very easy in the few long gliders. Um, probably my favourite bit of it here, it's just, uh, I'm really trying to get this down there as well. Okay, from here, so the climb has got quite low, which is So the ridges are working quite well, so we you can see just how stunning it is over here. <coughs> so we've still got probably about 10 hairpins, uh, something like that. And the bloody squad is buzzing around as best as well for um, So the ridge you can see there's a hell of a lot lower. Generally, the corn you earn all the way across here. Maybe John is in the formation on the way down. Then on the way back, you can see the camp as well. Loads of fuzz as well. Yeah, it's quite common to wave setting up in public park. It's usually quite weird to get in the high, so it's a good get wet. Which is strange because it's usually downwind. Um, back to okay. I know what you're Yeah, 
Okay, Landegla Forest, Cadaridris, Barmouth, Ridgewood. Work in progress. Um, I should have a trace here. So this is a trace, as, a trace of what I did at some point. Can't remember when. Um, the in the northwesterly again, um, you should be able to saw the home ridge, jump across down to where North Wales Gliding Club is, Landegla. Um, there's a turning point there. And then all the way down to the west coast, um, kind of past Cadaridris and Lingwill Bridge is the turning point you want to do down there um, via Ballot Lake. <clears throat> um, it's really challenging. Um, there's like a third of it, which is dead easy, really high ridges, and it's just phenomenal. But then there's some of it that's really, really low. Well, I say really low, kind of, for me, really low. Um, but it, it, it's, the ridges are in different directions, and it's quite difficult. Um, so you really want to do this on a thermal day um, to make it work. Um, this is, uh, oh, excuse me a second, <coughs> this is as we're entering Bala, um, and you can see this, this ridge line on the left, that's kind of what we're soaring into all the bigger bits, um, so it's, it's really challenging. Um, fortunately, there's a really nice field just pretty much under the nose there. Uh, that is quite handy at that point. Uh, right, next one. Uh, local wave. So how are the local wave sets up in North Wales? Um, so generally we have a westerly wind. Um, so can you, out of interest, can you guys see my cursor in the screen? It's in the screen now. If you can, please say yes. If you can't, say no. No cursor. Right, fine. Thanks, Dinam. Um, so I've highlighted the left hand side, the northern end of the mountains tends to trigger the best wave. <clears throat> um, you can see the next black circle along is where the air bounces and it's the, effectively the first bounce in the Conway Valley producing the primary wave. And you'll see that 99% or the, well, maybe not black, most of the people that get the diamond heights at, at the Winnie end up going to the Conway Valley, which is just where it goes highest and it's just so reliable. And then subsequent wave bars a little bit further down. And we're usually the third wave bar back on a typical classic wave day. Uh, bottom, bottom of the screen, click the mouse button next to the green box. Mouse button. There. Ah. Oh, I won't, I won't bother, Matt. I'll just carry on. <clears throat> okay. Skim through. Uh, typical forecast on a classic day um, you can see the wave bars coming down uh, that wasn't really a classic day but it was the best forecast I had on my photos at the time so uh, moving on and that's what it looks like from 24,000 feet uh, you can see the airfields pretty much just in front of the right wing tip there and that's kind of what it looks like on a great day um, right Cool. Thanks, Rod. Just reading the comments there. Um, so we're hoping to get you in later on and do some talking. Uh, I haven't mentioned this to anyone yet, but we'll uh, we'll talk about this later on in the in the presentation. Um, you should mention your wave forecasting service. Yeah. Uh, join the Facebook group, W Ridge and Wave Hunters. Uh, that's very good. Okay. So something that we've been exploring quite recently is kind of southerly wave, southeasterly wave, and it. Uh, it produces some stunning wave. Um, so the last ridge run that I talked about uh, from uh, Landegla to Cader Idris, um, we saw the ridges in a northwesterly, but it produces some stunning wave in a southeasterly, funnily enough. Um, so I think I'll talk about this a little bit. And that was a forecast. Um, so this is a declared 300 that we did, uh, I don't know, end of last year, sometime like that. Um, and that's using the forecast, and it, uh, I think I've got a video here somewhere as well. So a 300k is is done in a uh, in a southeasterly, and this is another 300 we did uh, down to Devil's Bridge, um, and I believe you can go further as well. And we hope we declared a 500 not so long ago, or a couple of weeks ago, um, and it didn't work out. It was too blue, um, but we think that it is on at some point. 
Right, romping down wave bar video. Right, I got a video here somewhere. Uh, right, is it that one? Could be embarrassing if it's the wrong one. Right, here's this one. Right, again, turn down your volume. Oh, to be fair, I'd, I'll talk in the background of this one and I'll just let myself do the talking there. So, uh, got some on the wave bar. 85, 90 knots, going up at six and a half knots. Plan is to go back to Bala, where we were climbing originally. Then back down to Devil's Bridge, and then probably back to um, This is beautiful. Really nice. Who knew that South Easterly could produce such lovely waves? just want to climb up a bit, which is why I'm not climbing faster, uh, just to jump over the next wave bar to get the, the bow. Look at this! This is ridiculous! There's actually 11 knots of lift there. Not bad, is it? <laughs> So that was us running down a wave bar um, on a southeast lee there, and the the, the good bits there is just is just phenomenal. So we're hoping to do a little bit more exploring with that kind of wave direction. I think that you can do 500s. Um, so hopefully I'll prove it at some point. Uh, what have we got? <clears throat> thermal cross country. Yes, we get thermals too. Um, so we're quite, I think, well known for being a ridge site and kind of a wave site. Um, generally. People don't really come to do thermal cross country, um, but we can do some. You can do some incredible uh, exploring on your on your half decent thermal day. Um, also, this is something that we wanted to do. Um, we wanted to do a 750 all in Wales. Um, I managed to do 731k, uh, and Rod did a little bit further. I think he did 740ish um, on the same day. Uh, so it's we think it's possible, so we're going to try and do that one. Um, the previous record for an old Welsh task was 500k, um, so we've beaten that, and we're looking to do a 750. That's the next, well, one of the next uh, things to do. <clears throat> uh, one of my favourite thermal flights. Okay, so kind of about this time last year, or last year, or the year before, um, you know those lovely spring days where it just gets you in the mood for a lovely season up ahead. Um, a smallish task of probably about 180 kilometers, more of a sightseeing trip, really. Um, I think I've got a video of it, and you can see, yeah. So, this is us turning Snowden, and the previous turning point was Cader Idris. And I think I've got a video of us soaring away from Cader Idris. So, it was a, a light northerly wind soaring right. Okay, video time. Uh, local, blah blah blah. Oh, which one is it? Cader. That one. So, uh, turn your volume down a little bit, and then off we go. <coughs> um, so we, well, I knew that the ridge, or I mm. thought that the ridge should be working. So I was quite happy to arrive fairly low. Weirdly it's small. Fun, uh, getting away from, from just it's below the ridge top here. Outside the boundary there. Uh, yeah. And then the bit of air, um, another ridge for the rest of the air, isn't it? So we, we're oh, using the ridge next year, <laughs> and as we get round the corner, you'll see, uh, you'll see why it gave us such a buzz. <laughs> Do you want to take over? David, you go for it. Okay. I'll just stay there, thanks, buddy. This is your endeavour at the moment. So, as we get to ridge top height, and just above, we kind of get to the bit where there's a nice thermal kicking off as well. I think that'll be working then. And I think we eventually core it something. It was about a 10 knot thermal. Um, climb away and then that's over the snow from that point. Um, so that was just a really stunning day. And these are the kind of trips that I like to do quite a lot. You know, we're not racing, it's just 
know, you're just going to explore, you're going to have to Say hello to our friends again. For me, that's kind of what the blind's mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Right, back to the presentation. Right, where are we up to? Convergences. Um, so, yeah, um, over the last couple of years, we've done a fair bit of flights using convergences, and it's really helped us. Uh, and it just gives you a few more opportunities to do various bits and things, and you'll see why in a minute. In a minute. Um, SkySight do really, really good wave. Uh, sorry, they do really good wave forecasts, but they also do really, really good convergence forecasts. So it's worth having a look at the convergence forecast before you're planning tasks and stuff, because it can just boost uh, kind of your speed and, and kind of in you, if you incorporate it, it uh, <coughs> it should really help your task um, and your distance and your speed and stuff. Uh, so this was a task that we did in mostly blue conditions using ah so this was a flight um that rod and i did uh in something um and that was using using the forecast and using clues with wind, wind farms and stuff looking at which way the wind blow, was blowing to work out where the lift was um and that was in mostly blue and that was about 350k um so this was a really interesting day so i saw the convergence forecast and uh we thought we'd go and explore it and we did uh, around about 470 kilometers all in convergence um, and there were no other flights on the BJ ladder that day um, which I thought was quite interesting um, so that was a uh, quite a mega day out really and another day where we did a, a 300 out and return near enough um, all in convergence and you can see it all sets up um, pretty much parallel with a with a west coast over there and so it's so typical um, so I use that quite a lot when I'm doing bigger tasks. And this was um, the sky on that 470k day. Um, and it was just, you just tiptoe along at 60, 70 knots and you just don't stop. And uh, there was never any really big, strong climbs there, but you could just tiptoe along. Okay, potential future flight. So things that I've got my eye on are, ah, what's the first one? Okay, so um, this task is 800k. Um, that's kind of what I want to start with. I want to extend that a bit further. So starting in the Conway Valley, which is where we usually get high, I'm hoping for a day where we start off with some really early morning wave that we can get really high and then jump across to the Lake District, um, potentially into Scotland, and then use the thermals to get back home again. Um, I've been waiting for this day for the last two years, and there hasn't been the right day for it. So it might not never, it might never come, but uh, you've got to stay optimistic. Um, so I, I think there's a potential for something like a 12, 1,250-kilometre 1, 1, flight using this, um, and that's by going into Scotland as well. Um, there's a few hurdles with airspace and stuff, which I'll hopefully work out when the time comes, but, um, yeah, who knows? We'll see. But that's certainly on the to-do list. 100-kilometre um, FAA triangle record-breaking tasks. So... Um, here we go. Um, I had a, an email from Nick Gaunt one day saying, oh, Chris, your ridge is just over 30K long. Why don't you use that and try and break the 100K record or something like that? And uh, what Nick didn't know is that the sea breeze convergence in a west so usually sets up as I've got it in the conference, uh, in the, uh, on the little, on the thingy, on the, on the screen. Um, so what we've got in mind is if you start it, uh, Pristatin and run along the uh, convergence to Conway South and then get down to Denby Ridge South one way or another as quick as you can and then run the ridge back home. We think there's a good chance you are in the making of uh, breaking the record um, or breaking the speed record. <clears throat> I think uh, Rod has tried it once or twice uh, in the Arcus. I think he managed about 130 kph or something like that. I can't remember. Um, so I haven't had a go at it yet. I'd hopefully get a chance this year and see if we can make some, something of it. Yeah, 130 kph. Thanks, Rod. Um, and I think the record's about 150. Um, so we shall uh, work on that one. <coughs> Combining two ridge runs. Ah, yes. Uh, so I have... Have I actually done this one? 
Uh, I've done it on the thermally day. Right, uh, let's come to it. So this task is com uh, combining kind of the run from Conway to Nevin, as well as the run from Cader or Landeglo to Can Cader Idris. Um, so you start um, where it says start, uh, Abigail South, glide out to Conway West, run down to Nevin, and you come back to one of the really nice ridges, and then from there you've it's a bit of a downwind dash uh, over to land better those ridges there. Um, on so I've done this once in thermal um, and it worked absolutely fine. Getting usually getting home from Cader Idris in the northwesterly is much easier than getting there. So if you can get down to Cader Idris, then you should be home and dry. Um, and then it's a matter of jumping across to the home ridge later on once you kind of past Corwin northeast. So that's something I want to do. I don't think I've complete. No, I haven't completed it all on ridge lift yet. So that's something we want to do. Uh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, that's on the to do list. Uh, we can do it on Condor. So uh, that's good practice for the real thing. Uh, cool. Right. Oh, that's the end of the presentation. Um, so if if you've got any questions, feel free to um, write away. Um, what we've got next is I'm, I've got a video from uh, that that Rod and others made I think in 1978 uh, of them almost successfully uh, auto towing off the side of the ridge and it's quite a good watch so it's about 11 minutes long so I'll put that video on at the end once all the questions have been done if if there are any questions. Um, and I'm hope hopefully we're going to get Rod on to commentate. That might take a few minutes to get him in. Um, ah, so we've got him as a presenter. Right, good. Um, so if there's any questions, cool. Is Condor realistic for Wave at Denby? Um, not sure. Is the question. Uh, sorry, is the answer for that one. Um, it's really good for ridge lift and exploring the local ridges, Neil. Um, I've not actually done much in the way of wave soaring on Condor for the, for Denby. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, cool. I think in that case, if there's no more questions, we'll move over to the video. Um, blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, what I wanted to mention as well, we've got a couple of uh, a couple of ones coming up, uh, a couple of presentations. Let me just read the notes in my phone. Uh, so, Mike Fox is up. I think he's on Friday. I didn't write the date. Uh, Mike Fox is talking about launching and getting away. Uh, so he's talking about where and when to launch or to tow. Uh, how to find your first thermal or wave lift and a bit about how the varia works to help with centering. So that'd be a good one. Um, and there's also, which I'm quite looking forward to as well, Santiago, the aka the wave god in Scotland. Uh, I think he and John Williams are talking about uh, wave flying in Scotland, how to go far and fast and various bits and pieces. So tune in for that one. Um, I think they start on the 12th. Um, so we shall... Well, I'm looking forward to that one, so I shall watch that one. Uh, Mike Fox, yeah, Friday 7pm, so uh, tune in to Mike. And, right, so the next bit, I'm assuming there's no more questions about that, so I'm just going to prepare this. And Matt, if you could unmute Rod, please, and hopefully... Right, yeah, you should now be able to switch on your microphone, Rod. Let's see if this works. Oh, uh, pause that. Uh, so, bear with us a minute, guys. Ah, I don't want to play yet. So, um, Rod, I think if you can hear me, if you hover your mouse over 
I don't know if you've got a webcam up with your face. Um, there's a bit that has a microphone, and then you can turn on the audio there. Ooh. No, that's me. How do I turn that off? Uh, excuse us a minute, guys. Right, okay. Uh, I think we're struggling. Uh, oh, Jake asked a question. Okay. Uh, oh, I've not seen the question. If you are limited without... A oh, question mode has been enabled. Ah, right, okay. I can read that now. Show question list. Uh, Right, uh, don't know. Jake asked a question. If you are limited without a turbo, uh, I can't see the full question, Dinan. Uh, could you see if you can find it for me? Or if you could re-ask the question, please. Oh, sorry. Are you seriously limited without a turbo? Um, uh, the turbo or engines do allow access for you to go and do different things there's a lot of times where you know i've only gone because i know that i can motor to where the good weather is um so it does give you a, a, a different kind of frame of mind as well um because you're unlikely to use the field that you've set up to land in um so yeah i guess I don't think you're seriously limited, but I think you are a slight. You, you don't. You won't get quite as much out of it as if you did have an engine. I think um, it kind of depends how adventurous you are. Uh, people like Mike Fox and stuff, the the heroes. The you know, engine. You know, you can do just as much without an engine as as you do with. Um, so I think it depends on you and how confident and how competent and all that kind of thing. So. I'd, yeah, I think up to a point you are a little bit limited, but it depends on you. Uh, public, right, blah, blah, blah. All right, how do I scroll down? Psychologically, it must be better. Yeah, definitely psychologically it is better. Sometimes you run out of fuel on the way home. Yeah, we've, we've had that one. Uh, I've not that, done that myself. Um, uh, what should a solo pilot with a bit of ridge experience expect on a first visit to your site? Um, you, the likelihood is you're going to share with me. Hey, we can hear you. Yo. Bear with me a minute, and I'll uh, have a couple of questions, and then we'll get you on to talk about the, uh, the video, please. Am I at all clear? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, go on. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll just answer another question, Rod, and then um, we'll get you on to talk about that video, please. Right, okay. Um, yeah, so if you were coming to fly, um, you'd have a flight with me, and I'll show you the ring, and if you're confident, then I'll know you go fly your own and, uh, are there any terms on the world that have never been turned? Uh, I'm not sure we've done so many of us. I'm not sure any of us. Cool. Jake and Tim. Ready? Yeah, so I'm going to turn off now. Um, Lord now is going to talk about this video. Um, which is going to be so I'll kind of press play. And if you make sure your opinion are all turned down to the left, you can just talk on the top of you. So I'll be mouse to the left of the video and the video down. Cool, cool. All right. Yeah. I'm just going to pause it, Chris. I'm not sure how my mic volume is. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear yeah, me? Yeah, we can all hear you okay, Rod. You, you, we can all hear you loud. Right, I've stopped the film because I think you probably need to turn a few mics off. There's a huge amount of howl back. And I'm going to give a short introduction, very short, before we start playing the film.
because I think many people realize, and I'd like to emphasize what an extraordinary place Glenny Park is, but it's not like any other gliding club because it's clearly something that's cost me a vast amount of money and I'm continuing to pour money in in these extraordinary times. I'm not looking for sympathy, but a friend of mine died today from corona and it rather concentrates your mind on why the fuck we're doing all this. And the reason I'm doing it and we're keeping all the employees on during these extraordinary times on full pay and still investing in, in the veil of Cluid, because I believe this will continue to be for a long time to come a very special place indeed for the gliding community. So I'm going to roll back to the 70s now when I was flying at uh, Cosford Gliding Club, the Rekin or the Reckin Gliding Club, and it was very clear that one needed access to the well, the well, the wave. I've been drinking wine. The wave in North Wales. So um, we took a cine film, and this is the cover of the cine film from 1978. Uh, Philip Wills had just died, so I went round all the gliding clubs getting sponsorship for the Philip Wills Memorial Fund for a sponsored gain of height if we threw a glider off the side of the hills in North Wales, because I too, like Chris, but much earlier, a few generations ago, was inspired by the tales of Bill Crease and the Cambridge Gliding Club, who in the 1950s used to come during the Easter holidays to the Vale of Cluid, and they would throw gliders off at the Cluid Gate, above Rithin, above uh, Landidno, um, and do extraordinary things which inspired us. But with our heavier wing loadings, we can't do that. But in 1978, we did. So I'll start playing the uh, this conversion from the uh, the cine film, which of course has lost a lot of quality over the years. So we found a farmer, a friendly farmer, with a field. This is just above Cloeni, although I didn't know anything of Cloeni at that time. There's a Dart 17 in that trailer friendly person with their Range Rover was going to auto tow us with a short cable just over the ridge there. You can see the wave which had been inspiring me for a long time and it was very obvious and here's a time lapse of the wave and you can see but this happens nearly every day in North Wales. It's quite extraordinary the phenomena that we get all the time off Snowdonia and the wind there is a little bit north of west on that day probably about 18 knots on the ridge and we're going driving along the bypass there but look out to the left you can see the back end of the the downside of the lenticulars over north wales there a bit of a time lapse as we prepare the uh, this is a blarnik we're launching the first time somebody holding up a wind measurement and an, an anemometer keeps being held up we're nervous about the wind strength of course measuring the wind there you saw him stand on the bonnet and he's about to launch the Blarnik. It'll happen very quickly. Blink of an eye, you'll see it go in a very soonly moment. Here we go. And there it goes. That was the Blarnik launched. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll see it up in the air. We're still on time lapse, unfortunately, there. We didn't have all the technology you Braves have got in those days. So I used my Triumph 2000 to launch the next one. I think we've gone on to another time now. We went up there at least twice. I can't remember what the date of this is. It's either 77 or 78. Used a Land Rover to tow the kit and caboodle up to the launching flat. And you can still see this field when you look up from Cloeni. It's under a place called Penny Clodiao which is a guaranteed place in the uh, in southwesterlies. That's Penny Claudio, just the little ridge in front of you there. So we've got the Blarnik and the Dart on this day. Totally different day, not so much cloud. <coughs> You're looking down into Cloeni, Cloeni Park, no airfield in those days. It was two cornfields. The 80 acre airfield was two 40 acre cornfields. So our syndicate Blarnik there, and we also had the Dart, and the Dart had oxygen on board because we felt this was going to be a pretty good day.
Tony Dickinson on the right, who became the CFI at Clueny. Very quick rig, that one. Tony Dickinson, CFI at Clueny about 20 years ago. A Camp Hill member. So our photographer's looking down on that little plateau, you can see. It's about a thousand feet up, the thousand foot contour line. Offers Dyke Path runs along there. And uh, Mike Osborne is flying the, uh, the Blarnik here. Mike Osborne on board, can't remember who, who his P2 was. Like any bungee launch, you fly downhill first, of course, release and away you go. In the ridge lift. I think I've been driving the Triumph 2000, which you saw flying down there. Stop before Offers Dyke Path, so I think we were actually launching from 1100 foot contour line. And you're looking out there towards the northwest, looking up towards Conway. Not much evidence of wave in the sky. The problem was, of course, what to do about landing. But we were, on both occasions, we got high enough during the day that we turned downwind and a very easy flight down to RAF Sealand, where the RAF, uh, the air cadets used to fly. They gave us quite a good welcome there, although we were a bit surprised by the type of flying that we were doing. And, something strange arriving from an expedition in North Wales. It's my Triumph 2000, which we were using for the launching and getting ready to launch the Dart was the next one. So I was going to fly the Dart. Tony Dickinson there. Christine Noel. All the films are taken by John Noel, who was with me at Cranwell and uh, won the Sword of Honour there and then went to run the Sultan of Oman's Royal Flight. He was the flight commander of the Royal Flight on helicopters. Those are his children, John Noel's children, 1978. The way we were. Beards are us. A friend of mine was driving the Tri Triumph 2000 as I got ready to climb into the dart. And unfortunately, the, I put a rather too much cable on and the car couldn't see the glider. So we had to have a relay for the up slack and all out between the glider and the car. And there was a problem with sheep in the field. So when we gave the all out or the up slack, the driver couldn't go because of sheep in the field. I'm sure they'd have got out of the way. And eventually, our wing holder, unfortunately, got a bit bored and let go of the wing. The wing went down. Love the flares. Look at the flares. They were the fashion. So this is actually going to be an unsuccessful launch, which is a bit tedious. Very advanced flying with a map. So you could see the car couldn't actually see back to the glider, trying to clear the sheep out of the way, my friend. And off he goes, but unfortunately the wing holder had dropped the wing and we ground looped all a bit tedious. Fortunately, not much damage. Sadly, the car driver decided because he couldn't see a glider flying behind him, he'd keep going. So he kept on down the hill, which was not a good idea and you stuff the car at the bottom into Offer's Dyke Path, so Offer, Offer won that day. The engine of the Triumph took off and went through the radiator, the toolkit took off in the boot and went through the boot lid. All very distressing. Bit of a pricey do. I can hear you all laughing. A bit silly trying to break at that speed, he should have turned across the hill there. very sad triumph with an engine through the radiator. <laughs> oh, infamy, infamy. They've all got it infamy. me. 
wreckage, but the Blarnick landed at RAF Sealand. So anyway, that's what inspired us to get started there. And then I spent the next 10 years looking for some land in the Vale of Cluid. Look at the flooding there. We still have that these days. Spent 10 years looking for some suitable land in the Vale of Cluid. And, and that's the inspiration all the time. That's just a typical time-lapse photo, any day you like, pretty much. Low, low system of lenticulars and their higher system as well. Transiting between the two is often the puzzle. But like every flight that we do, every flight is a conversation with nature, I feel. And no two flights are the same. What have I got in my logbook? Three and a half, four thousand hours or something. No two flights have ever been the same. Quite extraordinary. I think we're hugely privileged to enjoy this sport. And I'm very glad in the evening of my life to be able to put my private airfield at the disposal of people who Chris Gill invites to come and join us. So come and join the fun. We're struggling with the local council to get accommodation and more hangars. They can't see what we do for them, but we keep on trying. Alticumulus lenticularis. Easy, man. Think of us as a mini Omarama, but we've got to avoid Omarama's fate, I think. Just look at those two different systems. This can inspire some of you guys who are a bit younger at the sport than I am now uh, to come and enjoy what we've got to offer in North Wales. Chris Gill's your man. He's really been showing us how to do it because I was there for 30 years and uh, he suddenly suggested one or two possibilities I'd never even thought about. And I think the most, the thing I've really enjoyed lately is not the wave flying but the northwest ridges of Snowdonia flying from Conway down to Neffy in a 60 kilometer ridge is just stunning. You can see the longest zip wire in the world as you go. You can see the Lamberis mountain railway. You can see the electric mountain with its pond at the top telling you whether the country is taking electricity or pushing it back into pushing water up the hill. All the way down the Tlane Peninsula to Neffin, seeing the seabirds on the cliffs which drop away to the sea. It is just extraordinary. I think this has got stuck. Has this really got stuck, Chris? No, no, it's still going along. We're nearly there. 10 seconds to go, 20 seconds to run. Can you hear me, Rod? Yeah, I can hear you, so I thank everybody for, um, for your forbearance in this. Excellent. Um, there's a question from Dinan. I know there's a bit of an echo for everyone, so I'll tell us more audio in a second. Uh, Dinan asks, can you tell us about your favourite flight from the way? And you said, can't wait to bring it again. I love the music. So. Um, don't know. Everyone's different. I can't think of a favourite one. I'll have to say, doing that 7.45, 7.50 was on last year, but 6 o'clock in the evening, <laughs> I could have just kept on going for the extra five kilometres and landed in a field. But 7.45 kilometres, I was just passing my own airfield and the runway was beckoning. I just turned in and landed. After nine hours in the air, I had to be lifted out of the aircraft. and So I think it was a moral 7.50. <laughs> But uh, do come again. Do come and visit us, guys. Alrighty. And uh, John Gatfield, that's uh, all. Thank you for what you've done for them. Be glad to meet you. Righty. I think uh, if we wrap it up there, thanks very much for watching, guys. And uh, thanks, Rod. Okay, doke.